Hello, welcome to another episode of Jim's Allotment Garden. So you'll probably um, see a few differences in here since the last video. Uh, unfortunately, um, I've had a few disasters in the last week or so. Uh, blight has got into the uh, into the greenhouse, and as you can see, just take this plant here. What I've had to do is cut off all of the um, affected uh, leaves off the plant, and you can see I've left all the tomatoes on. Um, but unfortunately I've had to cut off probably about three quarters of the leaves off each of the plants on this side. Luckily down here um, it wasn't too badly affected by the blight um, but again I've taken off all of the leaves that have been affected. Um, I've spotted a couple actually in the last few minutes which I'll need to pull off which have become infected today I believe. Um, and what I've done is I've sprayed the leaves um, and all of the stalks of the plant with something called, and the fruits with something called Bordeaux, uh, Bordeaux mixture which is uh, it's, its active ingredient is uh, copper sulphate and uh, it's also got some lime in there I very rarely um, use any kind of pesticides or um, this is obviously a fungicide um, on any of the plants however um, I was left with a little choice. If I if I didn't spray these, I was I was um, more than likely going to lose all of the tomatoes again, like I did a few years ago. So, unfortunately, I've I've bitten the bullet and I've gone out and got some um, fungicide and sprayed them tonight. Uh, even though I've sprayed them, it has it does state on the packaging that if you wash the fruits, it doesn't actually get absorbed into the plant. It just sits on the leaves um, and the plant, etc. So you can wash the fruits after, but basically all of this. Is just to stop the uh, the rest of the plants getting infected um, by the uh, by the fungus, um, etc. But um, I've had a few more tomatoes ripen, as you can probably see down here. Um, amongst that, I don't know if you can see there's some down there, um, some small ones. However, all of the money makers have not yet started yet. I've put some banana skins down the bottom. However, that doesn't seem to have taken much of an effect as of yet. Well, I'm hoping um, I can get these uh, tomatoes ripened now as quickly as possible, so uh, I don't run any risk of them um, getting affected by the by the blight. But as you can see, the plants are absolutely laden with uh, with tomatoes. Um, I've had a really good crop this year, so it would be a, a crying shame to lose them at this point. And just to add insult to injury, I don't know if you can hear, but it's just starting to rain, which is possibly the worst thing that could happen because of the blight. But uh, Anyway, down here, on a more positive note, the the, uh, the grape vines have um, continued to grow. Last time I showed you the video, it was about there. It's now almost at the at the shelf. So, since I planted these about three weeks ago, they've actually grown probably about three foot. Um, so they're doing really well. Um, this side, I do need to sort that out, and uh, obviously that one there is doing really well. But I need to sort out and uh, cut off the one that. Uh, I'm going to remove, so just leaving two, but uh, I'm not quite sure which one's the best to take off, so I need to spend a bit of time and uh, cut that off. This, I don't know if you can see this this plant here, um, this is showing signs of uh, the leaves withering and stuff like that, so I don't know if uh, the blight's got to that as well. Um, I may just cut that, that top piece off. So that's the greenhouse at the moment. I still haven't got around to planting the... Um, the, uh, the butternut squash, as you can see, it's grown considerably. I've potted these on um, because I just haven't got the ground ready outside because I've been so busy with other things, blight mainly, um, that I've not, uh, I've not got around to, uh, to um, putting these in the ground yet. But So what I've done is I've planted them up into a bigger pot. This one is actually in flower now. Um, 
and I shall um, get them out as soon as I possibly can. So I'll, what I'll do is I'll continue video and if it does start to completely chuck it down I shall pause and come back. I've had another bit of a disaster with the uh, with the pumpkin as you can see. It's growing merrily but the pumpkin fell off. Um, I've got a reasonably good idea why. I think when I had the cold a couple of weeks ago I didn't water it for a couple of nights. I think it just got really dry and uh, they are known to drop the fruits if the uh, but that was that was on here unfortunately it's come off however there is uh, light in the tunnel I've got an, another one coming here um, so um, I shall just um, grow that one instead rather than uh, that one so I've got another chance at the uh, another bite of the cherry as it were John's just a little sign I think we've got some bees so he's put a bit of a barricade across there, so I'm assuming the bees are over there somewhere. Uh, he's also put a bin on its side there, so it's probably over there. Uh, I've started to weed out the carrots. Um, not very happy with the uh, the germination rate of them. So what I'm going to do is, between between here, what I'm going to do is uh, plant some more seed. However, these, these carrots are really late now. Um, I need to weed the rest of this. The weeds are going far too big now. Um, as I say, with the allotment, you know, you, you lose a couple of weeks due to ill health and it just all seems to run away with you a bit but uh, I will get back on top of it. The uh, the lettuce we've been eating, some of that, I've actually cut some out believe it or not. Well, so that's growing uh, that's growing really well, I need to eat that up now. The um, bushes and that are still growing merrily, it's almost four foot tall now. And the uh, the nasturtiums are putting on a really good show uh, all along here as well. Uh, the onions um, are still doing really well, uh, possibly the best crop of onions I've ever had to be honest with you. Um, out of all the allotment, this this end of it here, and uh, I think you find this with most allotments, you tend to have one part that's really, really good soil. Um, and this part, this part here just after the raspberries, um, is most certainly the best part of the allotment, the sort of from here and where the two tunnels are. Uh, I always grow the best crops, so uh, the potatoes are going to be going here um, next year. Uh, they were there last year, and I'll be uh, putting them back there next year in the tunnel. Uh, the peas are doing really well. Uh, since I put them sticks in a few weeks ago, they've really uh, picked up and they're now growing, growing up the sticks. Um, there's loads of um, peas on, but there's not many of them that are sort of fattening up yet, probably because of the dry weather we've been having. So. But I have been in there every every other night or so. That one there's that one there's just about ready to pick. So there is probably some on there I can pick now. But um, the kale is doing really well. That uh, that coffee that I put on it a few weeks ago has really uh, really uh, made a difference, and it's uh, it's grown quite a bit. It's really fattening up. I've got a bit of bindweed in there that needs to come out. Uh, another bit here. I do need to get up here and do a bit of weeding to be honest with you, but uh, yeah, so that's doing, uh, I'm really pleased with the kale. The um, the uh, spinach is also doing really well, that's uh, basically ready to eat now. Um, we've not eaten many of the, uh, the turnips, um, but they're most certainly ready, as you can see. Uh, that one there's a nice big one. So really they need to be they really need to be eaten in the next uh, month or so but you don't want to get them too big because they go a bit woody after after they get so large. But uh, that's the first tunnel. Um sunflowers are about uh, about four foot tall now. So they're uh, really coming on. I'm expecting them to be flowering in the next uh, two or three weeks. Uh, these ones here are also doing well. Uh, more nasturtiums at the bottom, they've already been in flower. The flowers are closed for today, but uh, on that one, there were some flowers on that the other day. Uh, I don't know if they've, they've gone over or what, but uh, the uh, sweet peas, again, doing really well. I need to put some more of them uh, rings on there just to tie them in a bit, but uh, we've had some lovely show. And it's, it's really nice at night when you walk past here. Uh, the smell that you get off those sweet peas are uh, really quite pleasant. Uh, some flowers. This one here is probably about uh, about five and, five and a half foot tall now. So I don't know if there's a bit of a. You see, there's a bit of a head forming. So I think we may get a 
a flare before too much longer off these. Another one there. Um, the broccoli, we've been eating the broccoli. That's done really well. There's a couple gone to uh, gone over to flower, so I'll uh, I'll cut them off and give them the chickens. I have been watering this a little bit. I've not been giving it too much, uh, but uh, I have been watering the uh, the broccoli, even though it's looking a bit uh, uh, pale. As I say, in the in the greenhouse today, it's actually been 40 degrees, so you can imagine how hot it's going to be. And it's actually it's predicted to get even hotter towards the end of the week. I think Friday they're predicting 30 degrees outside. So I'm not quite sure what, uh, what it's going to be like uh, inside the greenhouse. These sunflowers are growing. Uh, we've had a couple of courgettes. Come as you can see, there's a nice big yellow one there. I've yeah, not had a yellow one yet, but there's a, there's a nice green one here. It's uh, most certainly ready for picking. There's another yellow one there. And at the back, uh, we're starting to get some, some pumpkins forming. It's actually, I don't know if you can see that, that's probably about three inches across. That's actually better than the one at the back that I'm growing. But uh, we've got some more courgettes here. So uh, I should be picking them at the weekend and making something nice. Um, sweet peas again. Obviously the white sweet peas don't really smell of anything. Uh, they don't tend to have much of a scent. But uh, I've been deadheading them and they're merrily growing up the, merrily growing up the, uh, the side of the, the, uh, the tunnel. I've been spraying all of the uh, the bind reeds, so I've not pulled it out. Well, this is all out of good spray, so I'm hoping over the next couple of days that's all going to go over. The uh, some flowers here are doing quite well. They're probably about four foot tall now. And again, I'm thinking we're going to have some flowers before much longer. These normally grow about seven foot tall, so they're likely to be sort of at the top here before the flower. But um, what I will do is across the back of this uh, these two tunnels. I'll cable tie some, some canes or some pipe work or something across the back to just to give these a bit of support and I'll tie them in to stop them um, sort of flopping over. But uh, they're doing well. Then on to the potatoes. You probably notice there's a bit of a difference here. Um, the blight, as I showed you in the last video, well, I showed you cutting these, uh, these off, the, the tops off these, these few here. Um, unfortunately, within a couple of days of me doing the last video, um, the blight went straight across the potatoes and basically infected everyone. So what I did, I spent a couple of nights and I've uh, basically cut all of the tops off the potatoes, bagged them all up and disposed of them. Um, don't be tempted to compost your, uh, your potatoes uh, tops because if they've got blight you don't want to put that back into the ground. But um, I don't know what the tumours are going to be like underneath this. You see where the ground is a little bit wet when I've cut them off. Uh, I've been told, I don't, I don't know if it's right or not, but I've been told that's a sign that the blight's gone into the actual tumours. But we'll have to see. I'm going to dig some of these up over the weekend and uh, I'll see what they're like. Um, a couple of the people up the allotment here, uh, those people over there, they've actually dug up every potato now um, because they were so frightened to lose them through the blight. Um, and they have found a few potatoes with blight, but uh, um, by and far the majority of them have been okay, so fingers crossed. What I normally do is I normally leave the potatoes in the ground and dig them up as I need them. Um, if you've got somewhere nice and cool and dark to store them, it's probably best that you dig them all up. And it, the, uh, the, um, the Royal Horticultural Society actually advise you leave them in the ground for two weeks after you've cut the tops off and then let the skins harden and then dig them up and store them uh, because of obviously slugs getting into them and stuff like that but uh, because I haven't got a, a plate at this time of year I haven't got a place that's cool enough to store them so I typically leave them in the ground until the weather's sort of got a bit darker. Um, Parsnips are doing well and the, uh, the beetroot is still doing well. I need to thin these ones out a little bit here. Um, again the Swedes are doing well. I've weeded halfway up. I still haven't got to round to doing that sort of bit there but I'll uh, weed those over as well. It's been so dry, um, I've been mainly spending a lot of time watering. As you can see I've been watering the uh, the beans and the, uh, what's that, I'm just putting that along there, um, just to water them, because I'm, I'm getting tired of getting the watering can out every night. So I just thought I'd give it a bit of a spray, but you can see the water pressure is quite low tonight. Um, these calanches have been absolutely fantastic. Um, I've been coming along and deadheading them, a few deadheads on now, but uh, these have put on a really nice show. 
Uh, the beans, we've had no end of beans. We've already frozen probably about two or three kilos, and obviously we've been eating them as well. So uh, I've been really pleased with the crop of beans, as you can see. Um, I'll just go around here and I'll show you. Um, there's another load on, so really, I need to be picking these in the next couple of days and uh, cutting them up. The way I actually do it is uh, pick the beans, and then as soon as you've picked them, just top and tail them. And then I, I cut them into sort of half inch sections straight the way through. Um, then I just um, get a big pot with boiling water, put them in the water for no more than two minutes, blanch them basically. Um, as soon as you do that, take them out, put them straight into cold water. Um, and then as soon as they've cooled down in the water, take them, uh, take them back out of the water, dry them, put them in little bags, e enough for one meal for your family. And then um, put them in the freezer and then they'll keep for 12 months or so in the freezer. So that's what we typically do. I've already got probably about 10 bags in the freezer now. Uh, the corns have got the top bits on now. Um, not overly um, impressed with the corns this year. Um, possibly the worst year I've had to be honest with the corns. I think it's basically just because it's been so dry. Um, but the, uh, I mean these ones here are quite pitiful to be honest with it. I have been watering these. But uh, they haven't really picked up, and I mean, those have got the flowers on the top now, so I don't expect they're going to get much bigger than they already are. Um, so uh, I'm a bit disappointed with them, but at the end of the day, you know, you can, uh, you're at the, uh, the mercy of the weather when you, when you garden. So um, unfortunately, this year we've had so much dry weather, um, and we've had a bit of flooding as well at the beginning of the year. Um, it, it hasn't suited some things. It suited some things and not others. We've done well with the beans. Because we, because of the, you know, we didn't have much frost, and I was able to get the beans off to a good start. Uh, you know, we had a nice uh, crop of uh, beetroot, strawberries, raspberries, and stuff has been pretty good. Fortunately, we've had blight because of the hot, damp weather, uh, which hasn't really suited. Well, it it, it, it suited the blight really well. Um, the broccoli hasn't done fantastic this year. It's done okay. I've had considerably better years with broccoli. Uh, but uh, that seems to have come earlier than it would have done normally, and it's not quite as uh, not quite as you know sort of fat and um, you know as full as they normally are. They're quite spindly compared to what I've had in the in the past. But uh, I can't complain. I haven't done too badly. Um, I've not lost any money doing it. That's for sure. Um, the, the kale's doing well. The uh, spinach is doing well. The onions have had a really good year. I can't complain about the onions at all. I've, there's some really nice onions in there, so uh, really can't complain. The raspberries have just about finished now. Um, there is the odd one still knocking about, um, but uh, they're they're pretty much finished. But again, these have really suffered with the lack of water. I haven't really wanted to water them because you can promote the uh, the, the rot and stuff like that. But uh, the whole garden really could do with a really good uh, downpour of rain, which is exactly what we're getting now. Um, apart from the blight, but at least I've got all that cut off now. Um, the asparagus doesn't normally do this. This is down to drought again, uh, but it's uh, it's it's gone quite dry and brown and stuff. Um, it doesn't normally do that till sort of September time, but uh, nevertheless, it's got plenty of seeds on, so it'll be dropping those seeds. So that'll be uh, so well. The weeds have loved it this year. I'm forever pulling weeds out, um, so that's one not too bad. The tomato, uh, the strawberries. Really, what I need to do is uh, get in there now, pull all of the dead material out, and uh, give it a really good watering, and uh, get them plants up and up and running again. Again, I've got bindweed in there. I've not had these these strawberries have been in here now for two years, and I haven't had a bit of bindweed. And for some reason this year, it's appeared there. So I don't know if some birds brought it in, or a bit of seed, or whatever. But I've got some there. And some over here, so I'm just going to have to keep pulling it out. I've actually sprayed this bit here on the path, but um, I'm a bit annoyed at that because it's difficult. If you've got strawberries or you know some perennial plant, it's difficult to dig it out because obviously you're disturbing the plant. Uh, these flowers here, name escapes me at the moment. Um, they've done really well. Um, they're nearly at the top now, so uh, these are these normally last for six weeks or so, but they seem to have gone quite quickly but they have put a really nice uh, really nice show and I know I showed you in the last video and again herbs like it dry you know I mean that when you're planting herbs um, they do like dry weather 
and even these are suffering. I mean, this rosemary here, you can see that's gone sort of brown. I have been giving them a little bit of water, but not too much. But as you can see, the, uh, the, they're kind of suffering a bit with the, uh, the lack of rain. Because even if you water it, you know, it just gets soaked straight into the ground and the plant doesn't really get the benefit of such. But even the mint is uh, starting to go brown because it's been so hot and dry. Um, but uh, as I say, I hope this, uh, I hope this um, pumpkin really picks up. I was hoping to get a nice big pumpkin off that, but uh, I was a bit gutted when I saw that come off. But uh, still, these things are sent to try it. But as I said earlier on, the uh, it's been 40 degrees in here. You can see that's that's just today. It's 19 degrees now. It's probably about uh, probably about half past seven, eight o'clock at night. It's still 19 degrees. It's probably about the same outside. So we'll have to see what happens tomorrow. But the um, as I say, I've been absolutely uh, gutted with this blight. It's uh, gone straight through the potatoes and now it's in the greenhouse. I've tried really hard not to get it in the greenhouse. But uh, yesterday evening I was reading quite a lot of literature on the um, uh, Royal Horticultural Society website and um, I thought blight was mainly um, uh, spread about by uh, the wind, which it, which it is, but I actually found out through reading some of the, uh, some of the reports that uh, it's mainly, well, certainly in green houses and stuff like that, it's mainly um, spread around by insects. Insects get it on the legs and then they fly in your greenhouse and walk over everything and infect everything else. Over. So I've had to bite the bullet with this. I don't like using, as I say, I don't like using fungicides, but uh, what I'll do is I'll um, spray this as soon as the uh, the threat's gone. You're supposed to spray it every three weeks. So what I'll probably do is spray this by the end of August, the threat will have gone and the, probably the tomatoes will be the best part done anyway by then. So, um, but obviously if you do use this, uh, Bordeaux mixture. Um, what you do need to do is wash the tomatoes thoroughly, obviously before eating them, uh, because it's uh, it's it, it's active ingredient is copper sulfate, which is obviously poisonous. So, um, I guess the next steps are to weed the rest of this as soon as the weather permits, and uh, get on with the uh, get on with the rest of it. Really, I need to start digging the potatoes out and. Uh, putting those um, those squashes in but the uh, the one success story that we've had this year are the cucumbers they've done really mind you I typically do well with cucumbers but as you can see this one here um, that's the next candidate for the fridge and um, there's another big one here to be honest with you they've been growing quicker than we could actually eat them so uh, I've been uh, giving a few out to friends and that but uh, as you can see they're almost coming out the windows now so they're almost to the top of the roof so that was a really quick run round of the allotment just to let you know what's been going on over the last couple of weeks. Um, as you can see they're just at the top of the roof. So just to end on a positive, when you can get cucumbers like that, it makes it all worthwhile. So sorry this video has been a bit doom and gloom. I've seen we've had a few problems over the last couple of weeks with um, blight and pumpkins falling off and stuff like that, I don't know, I don't know these. Um, it, it'd be boring if everything was successful. Um, over the next couple of weeks I'm going to be making an uh, incinerator out of an old barrel, uh, out of an old steel barrel, so I'll, I'll make a video on that and post that. And uh, I'll be doing another um, July update um, in the next couple of weeks just to let you know what I'm doing down the bottom end as soon as I get myself back on my feet and uh, back up to back up to speed with uh, the weeding and stuff like that but uh, I hope this video has been of some interest and uh, has been of some use to you please put your comments below and I shall um, get get uh, another video on the uh, YouTube in the very near future so thank you for watching Jim's Allotment Garden <laughs>